Hey everyone, and welcome to my first ever Rome Total War Let's Play. So, I actually already recorded this, but it turns out my mic was muted the entire time. So, instead of just hanging out with you guys and uh, talking while I'm playing, I'm going to have to do a voiceover because... Oh well, my mic was muted the entire time. So if things are a little delayed or I'm talking through things a little late or it's awkward or whatever for a little bit of it, that's why, because my mic was muted. I don't know how it got in that position, but whatever. Anyways, I'm gonna play this game on Legendary. I'm gonna play as the Seleucids. I know other people say Seleucid Empire. The game says Seleucid Empire, but I prefer the Seleucid pronunciation. I don't know why. I know one's because one's the Greek pronunciation and one's another pronunciation. Forget the actual history of it. If anybody knows, show off your knowledge in the comment section. Anyways, I'm going to play as the Seleucids. It's going to be weird to talk over this for 34 minutes, <laughs> but Oh well, this is just what's going to have to happen because I don't feel like you going and doing empire, the entire episode over again and it feels almost dishonest because Bactria I'm trying to do a raw playthrough. And Pasaba and Anyways. others may also attempt to break away. Meanwhile, to the south, the Ptolemies of Egypt are scheming against you. Their desire to control your Syrian lands may yet bring about war. Although stability to the north and west may be assured by the Sardes who remain loyal, the warlike Galatians and the Hellenistic states of Asia Minor threaten your borders. The future of Alexander's legacy is in That's your a lot of hands. pressure, but the Seleucid Empire must not fall. He said Seleucid. I already knew that. But it still hurts. Anyways, well, that's a lot of pressure, all of Alexander's empire on us. All of the pressure, but I think we can do it. I think we can do this. I just like to start researching the economy first because i think scaling up your economy is the most important thing you can do and that's the best way to have lots and really big armies that you can find and then i like scaled economy then having a bread basin and then building up large armies sometimes the way this game usually goes and you'll see later how dead wrong i am in planning this but you can see in the diplomatic tab if i ever i forget it took me forever to find it. We're only at war with the south right now. And then we have a bunch of satrapies. But the eastern states over here that he said in the voiceover that are free and independent. And the chaotic people to the north tend to wreak havoc. My northern satrapy usually gets hit pretty hard by the three factions that are up there. Uh, Galatia, Pergamon, and Rhodes. And... The other factions to the east are usually wreak havoc on my satrapies. And my satrapies sort of wane loyalty anyways. But they sort of get wrecked havoc, so you kind of have to use them as a buffer. In this game, it actually doesn't really happen that way. They kind of declare lots of peace, and the south wages war on me. Which is usually not how this goes for me. Every time I play as the Seleucids, the south usually just chills and waits to clean up the mess that happens now from the war from the east. But I guess since peace so happens in the east this time, they don't wait. And they just go after me pretty quickly in this playthrough. And so I'm, I like looking for trade agreements, especially with people that I already have non-aggression packs with. And, well, the one I, oh, I didn't even want to do because... Well, I was afraid of the rejection. It hurts every time. I am here to listen if you speak so, Truth yeah, so I don't know why I don't have a trade agreement with my satrapy, but oh well. Especially the loyal You're one. Anyways. So, I'm going to move my army sort of east and south because there's... In, in the playthrough, I was thinking, I, I can move my navy south and I can move my army east because... Because I needed to be able to, to get to my satrapies to help them out when things started going poorly. Turns out, that's not the way it goes. Best laid plans, whatever. I use my spy to make sure Egypt is 
behaving and not moving troops and use my navy to protect there move that army to the north to protect against any sort of aggression that may occur and move that army south and east as I said just in case you don't have to go help my Sasha P out and then um, the next thing I'm worried about is the public order um, I take off the taxes on them and I province. don't worry guys next time it's just gonna be me playing and talking because my mic won't be muted I don't understand it's, it was the physical mute on my mic it was the, whatever anyways um, I think I spent a good two minutes or 30 seconds trying to figure out how I could see the breakdown of public order um, like what's causing things to be a problem I know what the problem is because I've played this enough it's the Hellenic influence right here in this particular region because there's there's too much mixed culture not too much mixed culture that sounds bad but basically their culture is not the culture of the leading empire me they are a minority that's repressed inside of the entire empire but in that city they are the majority so they kind of you know hate me and yeah there you go i found it so you can see the cultural difference is accounting for minus 22 public order the slaves are minus two i usually don't like taking slaves that much because it hurts public order and the money is not quite worth it sometimes sometimes you know short-sighted players cough cough uh, I know at least one friend who's watching this who loves slaves will do that. Um, but yeah, so you can sort of look at the party influence. And part of the reason why the Hellenic influence is such a problem there is I'm sure the Parthian families have a stronghold in that region as well. You can look at the map and see that, but I don't think I have to. I just kind of know. And here, I think I'm going to go with the Temple of Poseidon. Uh, Shrine to Poseidon, I mean. Um, that doesn't hurt you in food. if, And the others do. It actually produces food. And I'm... You know, it's got maritime stats and it produces food. And this is going to be a sort of a maritime trading city for me. Antioch is. It's my capital, capital and having a trade hub just seems the exact right thing to do. So I'm going to build a harbor which you can see helps with the trade. It doesn't really help with the garrison too much, but the trade, super good. And then I, I didn't move to the Navy. Why did I click the Navy again? Sometimes I just double check units for no real reason other than double checking units. I bumped my taxes up because Odessa already has no taxes on it. So it's not gonna hurt their public order. It hurts a little bit everywhere else, but it's going to give me a little bit of a boost in this early game. And the the buildings, I will start producing. Obedience to the rule. Huh, go away. Um, the obedient obedience to the rule. The buildings I start producing will offset the public order issues from taxes, because I sort of go a balance of public order and economy right off the bat. Because you want those two things in check before you start these massive wars otherwise you're in trouble and i think in this game all right also how many times do you have to click it before i get the <laughs> i don't know why it's saying i didn't issue an edict or if there's like a second one that i'm not issuing but anyways um where was i Prepare your uh, yeah see they declared war on me and that, that caught me off guard We'll draw the sword and shield it in it your caught me off guard that they did that they did this because it's just usually not the way the game goes. That is. That one's expected. Glacians attacking is absolutely expected. The storm has raged. And then the long. east and now and the east looking for peace is just not what I'm used to. They usually come after your satrapy is pretty hard. And then, yeah, Cyprus attacks me here with troop transports, and I was really just confused by this behavior of the computer. Um, I just, I can auto-resolve it because it's just so good. Um, I would, 
take the time to think about an aggressive or balanced stance, but I think just the balanced stance will still sink their navy. So I go with that, and sure enough, it does. They lose all of those troops because they attacked an actual navy with troop transports. Go figure. Um, I released the captives for the extra money. I really don't want slaves in to hurt my public order right now. And wow, yeah, the East just keeps paying me for peace even more. And again, I'm not used to that. That's not something that usually occurs, but oh well. I mean, it's better than being attacked from the East, the North, and the South. And I guess even a little, a little bit the West here. Um, but yeah, so... My ad oh, my Admiral ranked up. I, I really like that about this game that they included between Realm 1 and this is that you can sort of, that you can really level up your generals Excellent. in certain ways and pick their sort of build paths and what they do. Your generals and your admirals. In Realm 1, it just kind of didn't hurt that much to lose a general. Yeah, sure, you lost a family member, but like... I just didn't, there wasn't like a huge punishment for it. But now with the generals, you have a major time investment. And so I go ahead and force march these guys into the city just to try to help with the public order a little bit. Just sort of try to improve its influence. I'm going to move them to Tyros next. That's why I'm just looking at the range because Tyros is do you wish of me? probably the attack point of Egypt. And I try an RB sabotage. No, 54%. Why not? They will never know I was there. I mean, the cool thing about spies is even when they fail, they can still level up. So sorry. As you see here. Congratulations. One of your agents. Congratulations. I have needed to turn the vice off. I need to rem remember to do that next time. And yeah, so I'm looking right now. I'm looking for the option that will give me more food when I steal from them because it's primarily what I use spies for is stealing food from other people because foods food can really if you don't have it it really disrupts you your armies get weakened Excellent. your populace gets pissed you just you know lack of food can really be problematic I think it's a modifier for a plague if you don't have lots of food after a long period of time you get a plague so you can really hurt your enemies to steal food and help you because you need that buffer especially if you start building large armies and yeah so I'm sort of monitoring what's going up going on around here Cyprus being at war with me makes me uneasy because they're just right there and building a navy is not that hard I am going to build a barracks here or whatever it yeah and I'm gonna look up the look for the research of what it takes for the next level barracks because if you get to that the second level barracks right there early game you can have elite units and have uh, not elite units but really good units if you get to the second tier um, the first tier obviously you know it progresses but the second tier is like a big noticeable difference between the early game units and sort of the researched tier two units and they can really hold a line a lot better without retreating and breaking they just really it's better to have a, a good amount of quality troops than a massive amount of terrible troops Granted, one of the best ways to beat a phalanx is to overwhelm, surround, and flank it. But when you've got solid units setting the main line and then supporting the phalanx, it's less likely for that to happen. Their troops will break pretty quickly. The panic will spread and the battle will probably be over. Has some cav to sort of hammer anvil or clean up skirmishers or archers or slingers that are in the back line and then cut down the fleeing troops after the panic spreads you can really have a great disparity in number of troops or quantity versus your quality and really just take out all of their armies and really just decimate them over and over and over and it's just good to have those tier 2 troops again the chaos of the north and I hope that this Again, 
Somebody to the south. Declaring peace. Somebody to the east declaring peace with me. The south and north are going ham on me. Is it's weird. Um, I moved these guys here because again I'm fearing aggression from Egypt, and I start on the organized supply so that I can get the next level of troops, and then I'm going back to work on my economy and public order. So upgrading these types of buildings tend to help with both public order and economy since they're sort of like your main building and that's that's good. I, I looked at the food thing because food's going to be the next issue. It's going to be the next big issue and I want to make sure that I'm ahead of it. Right now I am but things can go awry. <laughs> they always seem to. And so here I'm looking at trying to get a good way to increase your influence is marriage. I look at two because I thought I had enough coin until I realized, oh, it's 560 and not 504. Whoops. I thought I had enough. Oh, well, I was looking at multiple people because it also costs gravitas to set up marriages. And I thought maybe I just didn't have enough for one person. I did for another to help the public order here. I'm just Ready recruiting a general. And some troops. They're trash tier. The trash tier units, but it's better to have trash tier units. Just sort of supporting public order, and they can go be a supporting army. Army if I get attacked somewhere else, which will happen, as you guys will see. Oh, another army to the south declaring war. Another, another settlement. A one settlement faction, I should say. Declaring war to me in the south. So this is sort of becoming a headache in the south and the north. Um, two front wars are, you know, they're never good. Ask, uh, ask Germany how a two front war worked out for them. Not well. So yes, this turn I start off with marriages because that really helps your influence. And then drowns out other people's influence. I couldn't get the one because Gravitas. And wow. That marriage cost a lot in coins. I wonder why. Is she just kind of a bully? Does nobody want to marry her because she's mean? Um, certainly true of the guys usually in this game. Um... Yeah, so this I'm going to go with a farming settlement because this is this, this settlement is going to be my bread basin. Um, it looks like I'm looking at Antioch, but I'm not. I'm looking at Dura. Um, I think I went with... I don't know why I went with Tyrus. Oh, no, not this. So I expanded the city without enough money to buy anything right off the bat. And I forgot about it. So slums are going to develop there and fill in that empty slot. And it's not good. Slums contribute next to nothing, except for population growth. And if you can't actually scale with that, that can be a bad thing. It's like scaling a business too fast. And since the public order is such an issue in so many places, I, I drop the taxes down a little bit. And I'm I'm just worried about Odessa. There's not a lot I can do. Yeah, I'm reminding myself to do that. I'm reminding myself to fill that spot before there becomes a slum. And then, yeah, I'm my turn here. Not a lot else to do. And at first, you know, these turns go by fast because there's not there's not a lot you're doing. I mean, every turn matters a lot. Like, with comparison to Civ, this, every turn matters a lot more in this than, like, early game Civ. But they still go by pretty quick, too. And at this point, I'm desperate for trade agreements. I'll take a trade agreement with literally anyone. It could be somebody I was just at war with. Sure, you get a trade agreement. Everybody gets a trade agreement. Everybody I can trade with, I'll take their money. And yeah, that's not surprising that the East... See, the East being in peace is really bad for late game fighting Bactria, because that that faction makes the most... It sits right on the Silk Road, 
and it makes so much money that taking them down when they can just throw quality troops at you and just replenish over and over and over is is hard especially especially if the ai plays it well i, I mean i've never actually seen the ai play it well but i've played it and i've gotten a late game of actually uh, with the economy completely completely scaled and you you can just outright bite settlements over and over and over again and so yeah here i'm looking at sort of the difference in temples and what they offer i'm worried about food but i also just super want the public order here to resolve itself as soon as possible and a huge part of that is Hellenic influence and making it so that settlement converts its population more and more Hellenic and away from the Parthian culture. Reduce it and that will also hurt the political party, my opposition political party, essentially. Right now they're lacking loyalty a lot. And here I'm looking at the quality of units that I get for that and really trying to assess how highly I prioritize that. Again, I really wish I looked right there and saw that there was potential for war slums to go up, but I didn't. So y'all know what's going to happen. Y'all can take a stab at that and just guess. Slums are going to go up. Um, let's see. And then, yeah, the technology is successful. And then look how many turns it will take to get to Hellenic. That's two, that's three, so five, then four. Nine turns toward till Hellenic. Hellenization, which will give me my really good troops. And I want that. I want really good troops. I don't know why it's still saying that I need to issue an edict. I swear I did, unless I can issue two. In which case, I don't know how to. But I just, I don't think that's it. There's some expansion going on here. There's some real northern integration going on up there. Let's see what happens this turn. We offer this as you a want peace, you want breached. war, accord and breached, accord not breached, you're hot, then you're cold, you're yes, Wisdom then you're no, you're Katy Perry. Go things. away. Ah, oh, slums! There it is. is a great thing. Slums are so bad for public order. I mean, I, I have to convert it immediately. It just, that waste of a turn of space that a good building could be occupying. It hurts my public order rebound. It's just, it's not good. Uh, so, I think here is where I make the improvement in food that won't. Yeah, because I'm down to five food, if you see. Five food per turn. Oh, yeah, take them off forced march. You can't attack out of the forced march position. That comes into play later. Um, so, I go with the. Grain pits, yeah, because the grain pits don't hurt public order. And then, you know, yeah, I'm really beating up myself over the slums in this moment. Let me look at that negative six food, negative six public order. One growth per turn, but really, who wants the recruitment of the mob? Uh, and then I think I go in and I get some marriages here. It's just, it's just good at... And this, she's the next person. Well, her and my last son are the next person I want to get married. And then if if I help the Greek families out a little bit, it elevating them hurts the influence. It'll probably cut in the influence of the Parthian families instead of mine. I think the Parthian is being four loyal is weird. And the Greek family is being 19. I think it's a war modifier. I think it's because so many countries are at war with us. And one of those, the only reason I could see the Parthians not hating us is because one of those is a Greek faction, a Hellenic faction, the Egypt. Um, that's the only thing I could see, but 
We offer this as a sign of a court. Yeah, I'll take their money for peace. Cyprus is scaring me with how big their stacks are just roaming around there. I'm getting less worried about the southeast. I I actually under anticipate a war from the south coming, like actual armies coming up. I probably should have been worried about that right now. But as you just so used to the north being the immediate problem that so these are these are super useful and they make a lot of money but I don't I don't want the public order issue right off the bat so I think I go with the public forum here and to get the public order bonus plus trade bonus I think I go with the wine trader and it just fits in with my maritime commerce and it allows for a um, tariff on trade agreements so extra money from a lot of different places and a public order bonus it's hard to beat that it's hard to beat money plus plus public order definitely don't want the slave trader place i don't like the sl the slaves are like an immediate gratification thing like they boost you up immediately but long term long term it can hurt you and it certainly hurts in public order and if you can't tell and like here in Odessa public order big problem I'm just a couple turns away from rebellion I've brought the cultural differences down a little bit but it's just not enough and I add two more troops here of slingers it balances out the pathetic little army comp a little bit but it also it might just help mo create a better modifier on the um, troops being stationed there improving the public order and then I I don't know what I do next actually I don't know what I was planning I think oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I go with a I tr I'm trying to decide between a shipwright and a military wharf here because one of my one of my cities needs to have and a navy is just so important in this game especially a good navy like you saw what just a few of my ships did to their troop transports i mean they just destroy it i think the reason i spammed my mouse over there is because i think antioch is going to be my um maritime trade city and tyros will be in my like more military shipbuilding area so and it also improves the garrison which is an issue as you'll see in a bit and i i don't think i do it this turn i don't think i build another it's just not a high pro this area shouldn't be a high priority i probably i'm prioritizing it too much because i'm just worried about it but in hindsight that was a bad call and tyros i think i go with the pit mine because why not extra money is just it's helpful you know it hurts the public order but later it's 420 per turn that's essentially that's most of a good unit's cost per turn so a, a, a unit the the hundred gold that it's bringing in is as you can see a, a bad unit is 150 percent of that so we just and then so like this army comp the what i'm thinking about i got these two bad troops right now so i don't have to wait later when i'm recruiting the good troops and then then I'm looking then I'll be looking for support troops I to fill in the gaps with the line so essentially these pikemen are going to be the front line with the spearmen on either flank protecting against cab charges um, from the sides and then these guys will the axemen the hillmen will fill in wherever you know they'll support wherever gaps might start to expose themselves or where troops start wavering or getting tired to sort of fill those gaps and then the light cav will be there for 
slingers and stuff like that. Well, the better cab that I get later will be able to do be able to do more hammer anvil type behavior with the elephants working sort of shot cab. So that's sort of my plan with that army comp up there. And that's why I bought the two trash tier units while I could, and I won't have to wait later. One of the things that I like about... Oh, the, yeah, the army force marching in. This I was not ready for. Um, so instead of... I think because I saw this guy in force march and you can't attack out of force march, I thought he was going to have to take one more turn of force march to get there. So that's why I recruit the way I do here. I, yeah, just get everything that I can, really. Because, like, in the first turn, first turn, you know, that's not a bad army for holding. I mean, you don't really want Cav holding the siege battle unless you can sally forth out with. Sally forth, but the city doesn't have walls. So there's going to be some fighting outside the city. There's going to be some cat and mouse game going on out there well, to try to filter some of the troops in. To the city and get them into choke points so all right i really hope i remember to fill that in this time but yeah i'm so focused on this army because it's it's a good army comp and i'm excited about it versus the south where it's like i need it i need armies immediately because they're about ready to be a major this is about ready to be a major issue there's already a massive 20 stack approaching on force march and See, this is where I thought I didn't think he had the range to attack. So I think I I make him make a choice. Either he has to attack my city or pursue my general. So I withdraw. Disengage. And it looks like he actually just doesn't choose either. Which I was super confused by. I don't know if he was trying to single out the general or what, but and this seems like a pretty coordinated attack. Cyprus is moving in. Eventually, Egypt moves in. And there's this army. And it's, it's overwhelming me. And then right now, I'm like too panicked to actually read what these things say. I think I end up going with cavalry training again. I do stand by quality units are better than... And it's good to see that I'm researching allization already. Because that's how I'm going to rebound. Quality armies is how I rebound. Better garrisons gonna help. So I force march this army here. And so he's garrison in there. I get this army inside this city and I send him back to recruiting. Fighting out a force march is really bad, but it's just there needs to be support here. We need good fighters. And yeah, I get everything I can because this army might have to retake that city two turns is the most I think I can allow for, Ready for battle. this is just going to be and this is going to be a struggle and then yeah I hire some mercenaries just to I just need everything I can I need to throw the kitchen sink at them because this is going to be an issue I see Cyprus moving there and I think here I'm tempted to move this army down. But if I do, I'll really expose my north. So this is just what's going to just going to be what it is down here. And I don't think I, I really don't want to move this army down because the public order is still so bad. Once the public order recovers there. So they down. And then, yeah, building that is going to be super helpful for better troops. But it's in the wrong city. I can't recruit them because I've already recruited the max. I don't notice that for a few clicks. It's like I have enough gold, but I don't see the zero at the top. That's okay. Then in legendary mode, the difficulty we're playing on, we can't save. So we're going to see what happens after I on the next episode after I click end turn here and see what happens with this 20 stack. Not the best units. So hopefully that's our saving grace is that they don't have great command. units, and we might be able to hold. And then I'm, I'm looking for... It takes me a hot second to remember where the uh, 
garrison is where you can see the garrison but anyways so next episode we'll see what happens again in legendary you can't save so i'm gonna click and turn and then close out and we're gonna do we're gonna see whatever happens in the start of the next episode we've got a 20 stack knocking at our door cypress and egypt knocking on tyrus's door and we're gonna have to take on three factions at once with no help from anyone in the entire world because their satrapies are lazy i can declare a war target and i can ask for their help and i just might um you can do that in the tactical map but yeah you can see the garrison there's a few units there some okay ones really and that might be able to help us there's some camel spearmen citizen calves some pikemen yada 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 we might actually be able to do a lot of damage to this army so that this army is being recruited and dura can come back and take back the city and move to tyros and rebound there i think i whether i like it or not i'm gonna have to move the army out of edessa and with that that concludes the episode please like comment and subscribe stay safe have a great day thank you for supporting everyone i sincerely appreciate it peace